We're thankful today to, uh, that we can come here and gather. We're thankful that we can uh, call upon God's name. And uh, we're thankful for this uh, city that we're, we're in. And uh, right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce uh, our mayor for us and uh, he's gonna read a proclamation concerning the National Day of Prayer. All right, good morning everybody. We've had, uh, we've had better days for this event in years past, but we're, we're grateful for uh, the lack of rain right now. So there is, there's always something to be grateful for. But I have a proclamation. This is something that we, uh, that we customarily read uh, on a National Day of Prayer here before City Hall. And uh, we want to do that uh, right now, including before the rain actually comes. So it says here, throughout the history of our great nation, the people of the United States of America have been guided by prayer in their daily lives. Prayer has been a source of comfort and strength in trying times and has been a way to acknowledge and give thanks for the many opportunities and blessings the people of this nation have received. Prayer has continued to provide direction and understanding to clergy, government officials, and laymen alike. This year we offer our special prayers for the brave men and women who serve in our United States Armed Forces and their families. Yes. We pray for their safety, for the recovery of the wounded, and for peace for the peace we all seek. Today, all faiths and religions in our community and across the nation come together to offer support through prayer for all the branches of the military. We'll pause right here. For every level of government, the business community, the education community, and for each and every family, so therefore, uh, and as the mayor of New Bedford, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim Thursday, May 5th, 2016, as National Day of Prayer in the city and encourage all citizens to join with Americans across the nation in the moment of united prayer. And I, uh, I just want to say to all of you, God bless you all. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you, thank you for all of your good works for the city over the course of the year. And for me personally, thank you for all of your prayers for me and for our city along the way. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. As we gather here together uh, for the National Day of Prayer, this is the 65th year that they honor the, uh, this, the National Day uh, Day of Prayer Task Force in Colorado Springs organized that under the direction right now of, uh, of Shirley Dobson. And what we do is, it's not that it's a one day event, although it is the proclamation that was uh, issued by President Truman in 1952, um, declaring this the uh, National Day of Prayer. And President Reagan in the 1980s, he said it would be the first Thursday of the month of, uh, of May, of the month there to, to pray. Our theme verse this year is Cry Aloud. It comes from uh, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. And it says, Cry aloud, don't hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet and declare my, uh, to my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. And so it, it calls us here to, to come and humbly pray before God in the leader of um, as the as we pray for our leaders in the nation now just a few facts before our national day of prayer and how it took place came about and we know that our founding fathers well we know the, the mayflower and how this country started and it was started for that freedom of religion freedom to come come forth and proclaim who god is and um so it's in the in in excuse me in 1789 uh, President George Washington said, It is a day, uh, the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of the Almighty. And that was in, in 1789 when he said that. And uh, our 40th president, President Reagan, said, If we ever forget that we are one nation under God, then we will remain a nation gone under. 
and we see how it's kind of trickled down and uh, the fear of God has been uh, kind of out the window. So we're here today to, to recognize where we came from in our past and how important prayer truly, truly is to our nation. And um, the first Continental Congress, well, before it was the Congress, the, the gathering of 40 individuals like George Washington, John Adams, many of the signers of the De Declaration of Independence, they got together and they met in 1774 for the first time many of them met together, the leaders of uh, our nation. And it's interesting that they met in Carpenter's Hall. And uh, it's, it just struck me as uh, Christ was the carpenter's son, he was known as a carpenter too also. And in this uh, place, just far from, not far from Independence Hall, they met and they opened up by um, prayer with Reverend uh, Duche, and he was from Christ Community Church, uh, Christ Church, which is nearby the Independence Hall. And the first thing that they did when they met, they read four chapters of the scripture, and then the pastor led them in prayer. And uh, it was a fervent, uh, prayer looking for direction when they were going to get their freedom from um, uh, Great Britain. But the interesting thing about it is just some facts. The Liberty Bell. You know why it's called the Liberty Bell? It's called the Liberty Bell because of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10. It says liberty should be proclaimed throughout this land. And it, if you go to the Liberty Bell it's, it's right on there. And it was first rang two years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And it was rang out there and it was read, that scripture was read. And that's the liberty that they were talking about, the fear of under God. Just a couple little different historical facts before we look at and, and before we pray for our government, our military, and, and so on. That just be, during the Civil War, or the uh, Revolutionary War, we see that it was important for the, the matters of prayer and the proclamation that they feared God and the people fear God. So one of the things that struck me looking back at our, our history in our country and how we actually were founded, that it was John Adams, our second president, who was uh, friended with uh, Dr. Benjamin Rush, who was at the time, the, if you want to call it the Surgeon General, and he was on the battlefield. And one of the things that he did when he came back in the meeting they were having, and he was, they were in the Independence Hall, and, um, or Carpenter's Hall, and what had happened was he whispered over to John Adams and he said, do you think we can win this war? And Adams, without hesitation, said yes. If we fear God and repent of our sins, we'll win. And it was mocked by that kind of reverence in the Lord. And nobody had to twist anybody's uh, arm to say that there is a God and to reverence God. And God was considered almighty. God was considered to be feared. And God was considered in his word to be obeyed. And so what we're going to do here is in this, this time of prayer, we're going to be praying for our government. We're praying for our leaders, our officials. We're going to be praying uh, for our military. We're going to be praying for our families, for churches, uh, for business, for media, and all those seven pillars of, of uh, importance that we have as we have a, a nation. And we are, are praying that we would be a people, especially we're praying for the church, because the church is known as a spiritual government. We have men and women who lead our country, and they need the church to come behind them in the place where the fear of God is, is what's preeminent and the, the nation that we proclaim. And there was 15 different proclamations that were given in the time of our, uh, when the war was going on in this revolutionary war. And these 15 proclamations were given by Congress, by the Continental Congress, and they were given with Christian language, with biblical language. And it wasn't any other forms of religion. It was, it was a form of a belief in God. And it wasn't about a religion. It was about a relationship. So with that going, I'm going to ask Mike Spohr if he will come up and lead us uh, as we pray for our, our government. And as he's praying, you can be praying as well. Mike?
uh, to keep it all in perspective, without disrespect, let's not bow our heads now. Let's look forward because this is the future that we have to look toward too. Our Father in heaven, you are our eternal president. Your son is our eternal vice president. And your Holy Spirit is our eternal state of the nation, state of union. Father, we pray that our government officials, you will give them wisdom and integrity to lead this nation, to lead this community, to lead this city to righteousness, no matter what it takes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the many hours that many people put in extra to make this all happen. And we want to thank you that we can proclaim this from the steps of the city hall here, which is the same thing that our forefathers did when they signed the Declaration of Independence and left that hall. The first thing they did when they left that hall, they met on the steps similar to this and prayed to God. So we're going to continue to pray for our government, how, whatever officials they may be, whatever town they may be in, to make this country great, to give us the wisdom and integrity to continue on in our future. And we just thank you so much that our citizens, we are not British citizens any longer. We are American citizens. And it was paid with a price. So in Jesus' name, we thank thee. Amen. Amen. We're going to call on the uh, Major to come up and pray for the military. I was humbled when I was asked to pray for our military. The Salvation Army has had a wonderful relationship with the military for many years. From our donor girls in World War I on the front lines with the men and women uh, to modern day. So I thank you for the opportunity to pray for our military today. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you today. As we stand here today with the freedom that we have, we thank you for those who gave their lives so that we can do this, Lord. And we remember them today. Lord, we thank you for those that are still serving today. The men and the women, Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices that they're making uh, for our freedom. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray for the families of our military men and women, Lord, who are making sacrifices as their family members go off uh, to many different places uh, to serve this country, Lord. We pray that you would be close to them, that you'd strengthen them and help them, Lord, uh, through the challenging days. And Lord, may we not take for granted what these men and women have done for us. But Lord, above all, we thank you uh, for the freedom that you've given to us through your son. Lord, we thank you again for our military and just pray that your Holy Spirit will be close to them. We thank you for the chaplains uh, that are in the military, Lord, that are ministering on the front lines uh, to those that are having challenges and struggles, those who have been injured, Lord. We thank you that the chaplains come alongside them to offer hope and encouragement, Lord. We thank you for that. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At, at this time, when we look at the media, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Joan Nato if she would come up and lead us in that. Father, we come before thee with thanksgiving and praise, knowing that you're a God that knows all things. And it's in the name of Jesus and in the power of your Holy Spirit, who is truth. I lift up the media. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God that knows all things. And I thank you, Lord, as you're touching the hearts of those who convey, convey the different things going on in this world, that they would indeed be, be men and women of integrity, and they would state the facts and the truth and not add or take away from them. Lord convict them with your love in such a manner that they will not only go in the reality of truth but they would live the truth themselves in this I pray in Jesus name amen. amen and now as we look at uh, our business commerce I'm gonna ask uh, our brother Steve Boulay if he will lead us in in that portion Just a couple of observations first. You know, it doesn't get any better than this when you look out and you see people on the chilly side and it's blustery and it's kind of an overcast day and all of that. And you get this mood that the world gives you. 
But you know, up above the clouds, the sun is shining as brightly as it always does. And so, uh, you know, I, I just encourage us, it doesn't make any difference what we're looking at right now. We're here uh, because we operate by faith and not by what we see. Now remember at the cross, you know, Jesus looked down and only one guy that hung with him was there. All the rest of them weren't there. But you know what? God was there and he's here right now too and he loves all of us. So uh, I have the greatest confidence that 131 years ago, the Salvation Army met for the first time on the, on the steps of the city hall or inside the city hall, 131 years ago. And here's the major at city hall right here. We're in the footprint of the, uh, the divine touch and, and, and providence of Almighty God. This city is a special place. We, we lit the world in oil uh, from a whale. And I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit is going to light the world again, you know, His way. And so, um, you know, when Jesus was 12 years old, He was in the temple and His parents, for some reason, lost track of Him and uh, ended up getting Him back in the fold and uh, Jesus announced to them, don't you know I'm about my father's business? So uh, there is no business about that makes any sense whatsoever than to recognize that we're here on the planet to do whatever we do, eat or drink, to bring glory to God. Whether you're the mayor or you sell insurance or whether you uh, are a cab driver or whatever you do, I had a gentleman just recently paint my house and he paints to the to God's approval and he did an awesome job and I was so pleased by that. So in the context of that and in the spirit of, of, of how uh, amazing it is for us to stand here in the presence of the CEO of all things to say, you know, we love you and Father, I pray for people that have a gift about them to be able to be problem solvers and, and to bring a value in their business function and that you touch their hearts because there's no one at Harvard or any other place that will teach a business principle than your love. And so I'm, I'm asking that you, by your spirit, you mentioned in Joel that there's coming a time when you're going to put your spirit on all of us, all flesh. And I'm saying, please don't wait. We need you. Business needs you. People need to, to know that we are a functionary to not only ourselves, but to help others. And so, uh, Father, I pray for people that have any connection whatsoever with business. And uh, I, just, I just pray and, and, and trust that if I have faith in the one who created us, and I'm obedient to your word, and I'm asking you for this, that you'll do it, and we can watch you function in that capacity. And I just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as we think on the next one about education and uh, how important it is to be educated, but to be educated in what is true, what is right, what is righteous, and, and those things that bring goodness. And also, too, when the bottom drops out, as uh, our mayor probably hears the complaint department a lot, and, uh, and those things to be educated in a way how to handle those problems. So when we think about education, the, uh, the founding way that the country came about, the two principles of, of learning was through what the schools were, where actually the Bible was taught at how to read, how to write, and all those different things. And also the place of education, how to do what, what the things are in business. And that all came from the hand of God. But when we think about education, you know, we, we look out and going back, I can remember in school, um, you know, I, I always thought I was the smartest boy in school because the teachers used to say, Larry, I can't teach you a thing. So, but that didn't work out that well. But the point being is education to be educated in the right way and to know who God is because God wants us to know him. God wants us to be educated about him. And those things that we can't see are those things that are valuable. So when we think about education, we have teachers in our system. And we have, um, we have a mom and dad in our homes, our parents in our homes. And what we do in education is, is very important. It's to learn the right things. Has anybody ever heard the scripture verse, the truth shall set you free? And that's, that's only part of the education in the place where that's only part of the truth. Because before that it says, 
if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, you'll obey me, then you will know what the truth is and the truth shall set you free. And so we need to know that truth. So when we think about education, we're praying that the education, how this country started, was on the principles and the foundation of who God is. So may we pray. Our Father, we thank you for those that seek to learn, to seek to learn what is true, what is right, what is righteous, what those things that not just happen by intellect, but even the motivations of the heart. And Father, we know that there was the one who created, the one who educated a soul to know that there is a God. The one that educates a soul to know the trust in God. The one that educates a soul to know that the repentance that needs to be required for the one to come to God in that way by the price that was paid by Jesus Christ. And we pray, Father, for our educators. We pray, Father, that they would come under the fear and the admonition of who God truly is. And, Father, that our country would be led back and we know that the education that comes needs to come from the people that you raise up to teach especially the young ones father so we pray these things in christ's name amen amen our next uh, agenda is uh, our brother pastor mike he's going to be praying for the church which really needs to be educated <laughs> thank you larry the bible tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And we have the privilege of using one of the most powerful tools that God can give to mankind in order to change lives, change communities, and to change our country, and that's prayer. So today we're gonna to pray for the church. Father God, we come before you in the name of your precious son, Jesus, Lord, as we lift up the body of Christ to you. Father God, that they become the, the, the foundation, Father God, for righteousness, the foundation for love, the foundation, Father God, for peace. And Father, we pray, Lord God, for our godly reverential fear in the body of Christ. Father, we begin to demonstrate, Lord God, the very reflection, the very brilliance, the very godliness of the Lord Jesus himself. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you strengthen the church as we bring unity and peace among us. And Father, that we become a reflection of your Son, Lord God, in every area of our lives. Father, you'll use the church, Lord God, to be the standard bearer, Father God, of righteousness. Father, the standard bearer of godliness. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing the church together, Lord God, to be the example that you've called us to become. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that we become uh, a demonstration, Lord God, of what you've called us to be. Uh, 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 a place, of, uh, a people of holiness, a people of godliness and of righteousness. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do in our lives. Strengthen the church. Let the light shine, Lord God, before, uh, from among the church. And Lord, let us stand up and be counted for. And let us take our place in leadership, Father God, and in our communities, wherever we are and wherever we go. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for all that is said and done here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And lastly, we're going to look at the... <clears throat> I'll be praying for the family. And it's interesting that in the, the seven pillars of, of, of uh, power that we prayed for, and the, seven, the last one is the family. And actually, it should be the other way around. It should be the first. And this reason, and I believe it's this reason, because God created a family first. And that's where we learn. That's the basis of, of learning the values. <clears throat> that's the basis of learning <clears throat> the, the moral fiber of our beings. That's where we learn prejudice also. We learn it through where we start, in the roots. So the best place I, I can think of, and it's we pray for the highest office of the land and also the highest office of this city which is the, you know the mayor's office and, and and the highest office is the white house but actually it's about every house and it starts with us it starts with us as as parents as the <clears throat> the bottling influence of our children and it needs to start there the basics needs to start at the foundation <clears throat> of where our country is built on and really it's built there mayors 
are born in families. They're not born in City Hall. They're born in a, a family setting. And that's important. A mother and father had an influence on the leader of this, this city. And it started there. So it's with the families that I believe that we need to start. We need to go back to the basics. And the basics is for moms and dads, dads and moms, to lead their children in a righteous way, in a holy way, and to fear God, just as John Adams says. If we fear God and we repent of our sins, there's the basis of hope for our country. And it starts there. So may we pray for our families. Our Father, <clears throat> we come before you, and even your name, our Father, Abba, Daddy, the one that we can come, the one that we can cry out to, the one that we have a hope and forgiveness of sin, because all of us have sinned and fall short. There isn't a perfect father. There isn't a perfect mother in the human sense. But the only one in the perfection, in the final authority, is God our Father, who's neither gender, he's not. He's spirit, he's love, he's truth, he's the only way. And he gave his only begotten son that we could have eternal life, that we could be forgiven of our sins, that we could live in, in the harmony with God, in the place where we can come before him and cry out in the midst of all the problems of this world. And Father, we think of the leaders of our nation who came from families, who have the burden of leading a whole bunch of people. Father, we pray for wisdom in that family of the government, Lord, that they would seek out and cry out to God. We pray especially for our, our male, Lord, that you would touch him in that holiness, in that reverence, in that fear of God, when that place of, of pleasing you would be the top priority of this, this city. And Lord, we thank you for our dads and moms who learn the fear of the Lord in early age and those who didn't know who you were and came to you in that place where they came to problems and they cried out to you and Father you gelled the family together under your guidance and leadership. For this Father we humbly cry out to you and we pray that you would lead us, you would forgive us. For you said in your word, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then you will hear from heaven. Then you will forgive our sins and then you will heal our land. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done today. The time will come when we put type 1 behind us. We're the progress is inevitable type. The rise to every challenge type. The type that knows bit by bit the future is certain to get better. We're the plan for a cure type. The improve life along the way type the type that will stop at nothing, absolutely nothing, until type one becomes type none.